dark fantasy. I am the skipper of the sea phantom. business are sitting here all right. I, I say, you're not a member of this crew. Blow me down. Your, why, your face. Look at you. Why, you're not human. Captain, Captain Strong, Captain... There's, oh, there's someone in your cabin, sir. Well, who is it? What's that, Isaac? There's someone in the captain's cabin, sir. Who is it? I, I don't rightly know, sir. Well, didn't you see who it was? Yes, Mr. Wilson, that I did, sir. But the captain always locks his cabin, don't you, Captain Strong? I, and I do, but I, I could have forgot. Well, it wasn't locked just now, Captain. You say you got to look at the man? I say, and full in the face, Captain. If you can rightly call it a face. What's that? What do you mean, Isaac? Yeah, yes, man. Speak up. What, what are you trying to tell us? I mean, sir, the man ain't human. He's nothing but a skeleton. What? Nonsense, Isaac. Oh, no, sir, and that is not. I seen him, sir. Looked plumb into his face, I did. And there's nothing there but bones. White, bleach bones, sir. Oh, that's ridiculous. With empty eye sockets and a gaping mouth. And he was writing on your slate, sir. Writing on my slate? Aye, Captain. Writing with a piece of white chalk. Held between his fingers. Fingers with no flesh on them, sir. Well, you, you've been dreaming, Isaac. Come on. Let's get down to my cabin and have a look. Come along, Mr. Wilson. Right, Captain. Isaac, come on. Aye, aye, sir. Why, it's impossible for anyone to be in my cabin. All the hands are either on deck or down in the engine room. That's what I say, Captain Strong. He ain't one of the crew. He ain't rightly nobody, sir. Unless you want to call a spirit somebody. Isaac, stop that sort of talk. No, but it ain't no sort of talk, sir. Begging your pardon, Mr. Wilson. I seen him with my own eyes. Sitting there, dressed in some sort of get-up I ain't never laid eyes on before. He had his back to the door. And he was writing on your slate with a chalk, Captain. I spoke to him, but he didn't pay me no mind. Just kept right on with his writing. Then I got closer to him. And he still didn't look up. So I stooped down and peered into his face, I did. And then I... I seen he wasn't nothing but a skeleton, sir. Well, if you were a drinking man, Isaac, I'd have you flogged and put in irons. I'm not so sure he hasn't been at the keg, Captain. Begging your pardon, sir. You'll see for yourself soon enough. Here's the hatch. You first, Captain. Just as I thought. Nobody here. Oh, cabin's empty. But I locked this door, Captain. So whoever it was couldn't get out. Well, you must have done that all right. I certainly unlocked it just now. You can see for yourself, Isaac, that there's no one in here. No, nobody. And no way out except through that door. I say, Captain, have a look. Yes, Mr. Wilson, what is it? Your slate. There is writing on it. Eh? What's that? Well, here, here, let me, let me see. Here. There, Captain Strong. You see, sir? That's not your writing, is it? No. No, it isn't my writing. Then one of the men must have been in here and wrote that. No, I don't think so. Because this writing 
is a style and a type that was used more than 200 years ago. What? Well, let's see. Huh. I see. That is strange writing. It's English, all right. Such a peculiar spelling and phrasing. Blimey. I can't read it at all. Isaac. Aye, aye, Captain. I'm seeing this. I can't help but believe that you saw somebody sitting here in my cabin writing on my slate. But I won't be convinced that it was a, a skeleton. But I tell you, sir, I... It was your imagination, Isaac. Oh, no, sir. It wasn't no imagination. I said it was your imagination. You understand? Aye, sir. Now, I don't want you to open your mouth about this to the crew. You hear me? There's, well, there's, there's some explanation. I'm not going to have you stirring up the crew with this. They're all superstitious enough without that. I sir. Those are orders, Isaac. I'll have you in irons if you breathe a word of this to the man. I, I, sir. That's all, Isaac. I, sir. Well, Captain Strong? What do you make of it, Wilson? Most extraordinary. I'm positive Isaac did see someone in this cabin. But... Surely not a, not a fleshless creature. I don't know. Isaac is a sober, steady sort of person. But confounded man. He hasn't much imagination. Well, who ever heard of a skeleton aboard a ship, much less one that could write on a slate? Stranger things than that have happened at sea. You know that. Yeah. Yeah, that I do. But I can't convince myself that what Isaac saw was really some fleshless creature without a brain or heart or eyes. Can you make out the writing on the slate? Yeah, I think so. It says, it is not correct the information you have about the sea phantom. Change your course six degrees north, northeast, to location 26 degrees, seven minutes longitude, 18 degrees, nine minutes latitude. Jonathan Strange. Jonathan Strange? No. No, it can't be. He was the famous captain of the Spanish galleon, the Sea Phantom. The one we're hoping to locate. Yeah, and he was. Jonathan Strange. Dead for 224 years. Lost in a gale in 1718. Yes. But not in the position this message on the slate directs us to. No. No, indeed. The sea phantom was supposed to have foundered at 20 degrees longitude. The message says 26 degrees and 7 minutes. Yes. Could this be a trick? A trick, Captain? Someone else who's heard of the immense treasure that went down with the sea phantom. Someone who's trying to steer us off our course. Get to the treasure themselves. I doubt that. What do you say you doubt it, Mr. Wilson? Well, sir, we've kept the entire expedition completely secret. Not even the crew know what we're up to. We've tried to keep the entire expedition a secret. I'm positive I haven't mentioned to anyone... No, have I, Captain Strong. When I stumbled upon the information about the sea phantom, I knew there was an excellent opportunity to recover almost a million dollars worth of gold. But naturally, I needed a boat. You were the first one I thought of. And neither of us would have had a reason for disclosing our knowledge about the treasure. That's just it. That's why I'm so inclined to believe Isaac was telling us the truth. About the thing... Without flesh, writing this message? Precisely. Ah, oh, that's, that's unbelievable. Even so, Captain, you must admit that a man who's been dead more than 200 years certainly wouldn't be much more than a skeleton. Isn't uh, that right? You mean... Uh, good heavens. You mean this message was... Actually written by Jonathan Strange himself. I mean exactly that. Hmm. I wonder. 
What about it, Captain? Do we change the course? I don't know. What's your advice? Normally, I'm not superstitious. But, well, what can we do? I've never believed in ghosts or spirits up to now. But that message on that slate certainly is convincing. Then you're in favor of following the instructions. Well, Mr. Wilson? Yes. Let's change the course and go to the spot the message mentions. If you're willing to take a chance, I certainly am. Yes, who's there? Uh, me, sir, Isaac Newton, sir. Well, come in and stop that noise. Now, oh, what in thunder's gotten into you, waking me up in the middle of the night? What time is it, anyway? Eight bells, sir. Midnight. Midnight? A big day ahead tomorrow. Oh, confounded man, what do you want? Well, I'm, I'm standing watch alone tonight, sir. I, I, maybe I should have told this to the captain, but I, I come to you first. Well? Well, I've just sighted a boat to the port side, sir. Well, have you identified her? Oh, no, sir. You see, well, she ain't carrying no lights, sir. No lights? Oh, no, sir. And she's not like any ship I've ever seen, sir. Hmm. Right to the port side, you say? Aye, sir. She's riding with full sail. What? Aye, sir. She looks to me like one of those old-time boats you see in pictures. Hand me my boots there, Isaac. I'll come up on deck and have a look. She blows, sir. You see? Not a sign of life aboard her, sir. And the moon's full tonight. Look, man. Look. Uh, what, Mr. Wilson? That name on the bow. I can't see that far, sir. My eyes are... That aren't... name. The Sea Phantom. Sea Phantom, sir? Yes. No wonder she's carrying no lights. No wonder there's no one aboard. What do you mean, sir? Isaac, if you've never seen a ghost ship, take a look at that boat out there. Ghost ship? Yes. The sea phantom went down in these waters more than 200 years ago. Blow me down, sir. Are you having a joke with me, Mr. Wilson? No. No, this is no joke. That's a ghost ship, right enough. You watch. She'll be gone in a minute or two. I'm begging your pardon, sir. But that boat's real. Ghost ships always look real, Isaac. But look you, sir. She's close enough to see. She's within throwing distance, I do believe. Here. This belaying pin here, Mr. Wilson. I, I'll i try to throw it aboard the sea phantom. Good. You <laughs> watch. That pin will just go through thin air. We'll see, sir. Well, here it goes. Ah. There, sir. You hear that? She is real. But that boat's so old, she should have fallen apart years ago. And besides that, she's supposed to be at the bottom of the Atlantic. She looks old enough, all right, sir. But I don't understand what you mean about her supposed to be... Isaac. I, sir. Lower a boat. A boat, sir? Yes, confounded a boat. Lower one at once. Are we going aboard the sea phantom, Mr. Wilson? I am, yes. Now lower a boat to the port side and double quick about it. up alongside. Aye, sir. Yeah. Tie up to that rope hanging there. Right, sir. There. All set, sir. Right. Well, you stay here and watch, Isaac, while I go aboard. If I'm not back in a half hour, come aboard looking for me. Aye, aye, sir. Half an hour, sir. If you're not back by then, sir, I'll come aboard after you. Keep a sharp lookout, Isaac. Let me know if you see anybody aboard. Aye, aye, sir. So 
quiet aboard. Can't even hear the wind. No sign of life. No sign of life having been here for score upon score of years. Rotting timbers. Sea-soaked deck. Twisted, tangled ropes. Empty kegs with rusted hoops and warped staves. Strips of time-worn sails. And canvas swaying on the masts. Everything so, so quiet. Quiet as though in reverence for the dead. Uh, here, the hatch. Captain's quarters must be down here. Yes, yes. This must have been his hangout. Let's have a look. Hmm. A light burning in here. Let me say, what's that? Oh. Bones. An entire human skeleton slumped here in the corner of the cabin. As though a man had propped himself up there and died. Exactly, my friend. Who's that? Did someone speak? Certainly me. But where are you? Over here. But I, I don't see you. There's no one in this room but myself. Yourself and that gentleman slumped there in the corner. Who are you? My name is Jonathan Strange. Jonathan Strange? Why, why, you're the skipper of the Sea Phantom. That I am. Jonathan Strange, captain of the Sea Phantom, sailing with a cargo of gold for the Spanish ruler. But, why, your boat went down in a gale 200 years ago. So history says yes, but men do not know everything. I don't understand. The Sea Phantom was no victim of a storm at sea. Oh, no, my friend. She was the victim of a cruel and vicious man. I still don't understand. Look here. You see the rusted iron ring there on the floor by your feet? Huh. Uh, yes. Take hold of it and pull. It's a trap door to in my cabin. That's it. It may be difficult. Use your strength on it. A little more force now. Ah, that's it. There. You see? Gold. Bar upon bar of solid gold. Yes, gold for the king of Spain. And chests of coins and jewels. One day for the queen. But Jose would have them for his own. He intends to mutiny the crew and steal the treasures that have been entrusted to us. Who's this Jose? Jose Menel. Wicked and cold-hearted fiend. Even now the crew is waiting for me to leave this cabin. They know they'll never enter here while life is in my body. But surely there's some escape. No, none. They think I will remain here to starve to death. <laughs> They're fools. They do not know that they're about to perish. Like the rats they are. What do you mean? Don't you smell the smoke? Listen. I can hear the flames. Yes. Yes, I do. And they cannot escape in the boats because I foresaw this mutiny and put the lifeboats out of commission. But can't you escape? No, of course not. But for you to escape, you must make haste, my friend. How? Oh. The same way you went here, of course. Hurry now, my friend, and take this with you. What is it? What, what are you giving me? You'll see. Hurry now. There's no time to waste. Soon the ship will be one mass of roaring flames, and none of us will be left alive. Can't I take you with me? Can't you make yourself a parent so I can see you and take you along? No, it doesn't matter. But let me warn you. With my life, I've protected the treasures of the king and queen. Throughout all eternity, I'll guard those treasures. It will not be wise for any man to attempt to obtain them for his own. Yes, Jonathan Strange. I believe I understand exactly what you mean. That's why you brought me here. 
to show me. Exactly. I must hurry. Mr. Wilson, sir. Are you in there, Mr. Wilson? Isaac, is that you? I sir. Blowing down, Mr. Wilson. This beastly bolts of fire. If we don't get over here in a jiffy, we'll be paying a visit to Davy Jones' locker before we do it, sir. So, Captain Strong, that's exactly what happened. And I repeat, it was no nightmare. Isaac here can vouch for that. It's the very truth, Captain Strong. Word for word. So help me heaven. Hmm. And that was fair warning. And whoever attempts to get the treasures of the sea phantom is doomed. Aye, sir. Just as those mutineers were doomed 200 years ago, sir. It's odd. Very odd. I'm amazed you or the others of the crew weren't awakened by the sound of the fire. No. None of us heard a sound. The men don't even know about it now. I wouldn't have known about it myself if you two hadn't told me your story. If I hadn't seen those bits of charred wood floating on the surface this morning. It was a huge treasure, Captain. I saw it in its hiding place, beneath the skipper's cabin. And you got none of it? Not a single bit, Oh, wait. I almost forgot. Just before I left the boat, this thing was handed to me. Handed to you? But I thought you said there was nothing in that cabin but a pile of bones. Yes. Yes, that is right. But, but this seemed to come, well, almost out of nowhere. And it was placed very firmly in my hands. He sure enough had it in his hands when I broke into the cabin, sir. Uh, let's have a look. Hmm. Why, this was the ship's log. The log? Yes. The complete log of the Sea Phantom's voyage. From the date of sailing, right on up through the mutiny. Look. This writing. It's the same hand. The writing on my slate and the writing on this paper are the very same. Curve for curve, angle for angle. Here, let me see. I say, Captain. Yes, Mr. Wilson. Look here. On this last page. It reads... Now that it has become my solemn duty to protect the treasures which have been entrusted to me, I will send the sea phantom to her ocean grave together with the treasure... This is my course as I see it. God assist me. Jonathan Strange, May 29th, 1718. The Sea Phantom. Tonight's tale of dark fantasy by Scott Bishop. Ben Morris was heard tonight as Mr. Wilson. Fred Wayne played Captain Strong. Muir Height was Isaac and Garland Moss was Captain Jonathan Strange, skipper of the Sea Phantom. Next Friday at this time, we'll bring you another dark fantasy drama being the 13th story in this series, and next Friday being Friday the 13th, Scott Bishop defies superstition utterly and completely to bring you one of his most exciting and unusual tales. Listen for...
W is for Werewolf. A weird adventure laid upon a sunny tropical island where all seems peaceful and serene, but where a grim and vicious destiny festers slowly into breathtaking, unbelievable reality. Dark Fantasy originates each Friday night in the WKY Studios, Oklahoma City. Tom Paxton speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company.